Welcome back to Atlanta. Okay. First three episodes have been very good. It's kind of trippy, actually. Oh, look who it is. To this day, this guy reminds me of my brother for some reason. Bro, whatever. It's alright, what? you can go. Nah, it's whatever. What happened there? Can I get a large coffee, please? I wasn't really paying attention yeah. either. Yeah. I was <laughs> kind of focused on whatever he was looking at. So who is this guy? Um, I'm getting the feeling that we're back in Atlanta, which makes me wonder if that's going to be for the whole episode. What's going on with that? Big payback. All right. It seems like whenever we get an episode that is taking place in Atlanta, we get that, like that kind of title card here. and then we get the usual one when She's we're with uh great thanks urn van and all them due to the fact that his ancestors were enslaved by relatives of mr beckford's and you have to think this decision will have very far-reaching consequences all around the world Dad? and especially in america i mean it would if there was a legal was precedent so set with that that would have a pretty big out. impact i think she wants you to come home i just think so well you're a child and probably don't know shit but got it maybe Maybe you heard something. I'll talk to her about it. Oh, that was kind of sweet. I tend to do the same with unknown numbers. It's nothing personal. Just get so many scam calls. So far, they're killing it on the sound design of this episode. Okay, so why is there someone following him? What's going on? I've been told that HR will be. This is ridiculous! Jesus. Now I know. Ideas are forming. I don't want to speak too soon on it, though. Um, I kind of want to see where they There's a rumor push the story sued forward. The same clause that got the Tesla guy litigation. Now they can just look you up and force you to pay. That would be scary, but I have more to say on that. Again, I I kind of want to wait and see how they not a care they the go world. about this. Oh Aren't fuck you, you! Not a care in the world. I don't think you <laughs> understand. <laughs> Oh, my lord. Ugh. Lady, you are shooting my anxiety through the roof. I need you to stop. We're Austro-Hungarian. We were enslaved during the Byzantine Empire. Uh, I don't think that's really going to hold up. Hungry and demand money now? Kind of a lot different. Mm -hmm. yeah, I like a lot of cheese on my pasta as well. Gonna get an answer to who this is. I'm assuming someone... <laughs> Coming for him for some um, reparations, but maybe not. Maybe that's a misdirect. You've been served. Okay. My name is Shaniqua Johnson of the St. Louis Johnsons. Your family okay. owned my great great grandmother and father for 12 years. You owe me money. Excuse me. Ooh, look Excuse me. Who is it, Dad? Yeah. Look at this I mean, ma'am, could you could you please get out of my house? <laughs> if you want reparations and everything, we can discuss that. But you got to get the fuck out of my house. I want what's owed to me, Marshall. You know what? All right. If you don't get out right now, I'm calling. Again, the we can discuss that. <laughs> like I'm we calling could, the police That right can now. be arranged. You know what? And don't slam my door. I would slam it again just because I'm a little petty. Uh, but for real though, like reparations. If that were to happen, it's like, yeah, you, you could get your money legally if that were a thing, but it wouldn't come all at once. It wouldn't be like, all right, here's my house and my car and all my money, and I guess I'll pay you everything for the next however many years. Like, it would come in forms of payments. It would be like a tax on something. Okay, let's do it. 69% Ashkenazi Jew, baby. We were slaves, too. <laughs> God. The Austro-Hungarians were slaves as well. The long-lasting effects of that are also not as felt as other forms of slavery. And that's kind of the, the main takeaway I would take from that, but you know. I can't tell if, like, he was forced to wear that or if he's like, yeah, I'm proud. So he's got to wear that shirt twice a week. One of them has to be Sunday. I mean, if it's... Right. That and not any actual form of money payment, I kind no. of agree that it's kind of getting up a little easy. But is that not kind of cruel and unusual punishment, like uh, public embarrassment? Marshall Johnson, you owe me money. I, 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 All right, I'm not the let's, Tesla guy. Let's discuss okay, a payment have that plan. Kind of money. Please, just leave me alone. That's exactly what my great great grandmother said. Great no, no, no. Got a point. Not true. 
Three million dollars. Yeah, again, three million, it, it literally can't be done <laughs> all at once. So let's discuss the payment plan and let's proceed, you know? The only thing you can do is say you were wrong and give her as much money as you can. Cut you down a bit. I just don't know what to do. <laughs> he's like, yeah, so I'm not doing that. You gotta fight that shit, man. I mean, as as her, he's right, though. Me. No, I don't ask. <laughs> On one hand, I'm like, yeah, I have every right to laugh at the situation. On the other hand, I don't like when people are being rude assholes <laughs> from any parties, so I don't know. This could have easily happened to you. I'm Peruvian. This would never happen to me. Per you were white yesterday. <laughs> okay, look. Can we just for all the white people out there grasping at straws, trying to be a minority. I can't have my finances take a hit. Are you serious? Wait. What? I like how her finances were the like the big deciding factor there, not their kid. Go get him. <laughs> yeah. See, again, I'm like, I'm all for the doing some payments, but um get the fuck away from my house like i don't know oh my god <laughs> <laughs> you're in a car dude he's not gonna fucking catch you it's an interesting way to show this whole thing because on one hand you're definitely sympathetic for him you're like this is you know unfair he seems like a good enough guy at the very least not a bad guy and he is kind of having his whole life like ruined right now I would not mind a cookie right now. Oh, don't start crying. Oh shit, what the fuck? How long are you here for? That's kind of cool actually that they Honestly, <laughs> like I tied those two episodes together. Sure. We're in the exact same thing he was in uh, the first Let's one. Call me e. Two days ago I had a good life and now I'm being fucked by some shit that I didn't even do. Losing my wife. I mean, my that's house. one way to look at it, but there is also the flip side to that. Hold himself up by his own bootstraps, you know. But that was bullshit. Turns out he didn't. We don't deserve this. Well, what do they deserve? Yeah, there. Fair point. Confession is not absolution. That's and that in was the really case good. Of this person, what's her name? We were running from it. Now we're free. Like, discussions of reparations have been, you know, put out there for a long, long time. But maybe when something like that actually happens and things have settled and we can actually say everybody's on equal footing, maybe then we really can all be, you know, freed from the curse. <laughs> that really really took me by surprise <clears throat> i didn't know what he was doing in the background it's actually probably really true if uh real reparations like this ever came to be i bet you there'd be a lot of white people who would just straight up kill themselves and who is this one has a portion of their paycheck going to restitution taxes stay after uh, see what did i say what did i say Okay, and percentage, 15%. 15%? I mean, to be clear, I wouldn't want 15% of my paycheck to go anywhere but me either, but if it helps to, like, repair the wrongs that have never healed, then shit, let's do it. They actually, okay. Okay. <laughs> so everyone on the line is person of color, it seems. That looks so good, actually. <laughs> oh, this is the song that was uh, at the end of Us. Alright. That was, again, way different than I expected, but I actually enjoyed it a lot. Well, it was quite an interesting episode. Once again, I think it was risky of them to diverge away from the main group again. But the fact that they've now done it twice and it seemingly kind of random moments during the season, I kind of get the feeling that we're gonna be doing this a lot. <laughs> like this will not be the last time that we um, completely diverge away from the four main characters in order to go back to Atlanta and explore this sort of what if world 
that they have going on. And on one hand, I like that it lets them explore some, you know, fun, interesting concepts. Like here was pretty much like a, it was almost like a Twilight Zone kind of episode. Like what if this really came to be? I had to show this to my dad. This would freak him the fuck out. It'd be kind of funny. In the intro scene, it seems like the uh, cashier was... I can't tell if she was just overtly being racist and telling the guy to get to the back of the line for no reason. Or what exactly was going on there. I mean, it was intentionally like muffled, that entire conversation, because the main character himself was not really paying attention. Which might be the point. It might be like... You know, he's lost in his own world and doesn't even witness, you know, something that actually has happened to someone. But after watching it twice, I still can't tell if something like <laughs> really happened there. So if that's the case, I think they should have made that a little more clear. But then they do a good job making you um, sympathize with and at the very least not hate um, this guy. He's seemingly, you know, a good enough person. He's not bad by any means but he also isn't exactly doing anything to like right previous wrongs like with Shaniqua he just continued to like try to run from that problem rather than actually like try and talk to her although I still say Shaniqua handled that super poorly as well I mean again barging into someone's house not fucking cool like having a barbecue with um, a bunch of people like on his property it's not cool I get it that a lot of it's for comedy's sake, but that did kind of bother me. I was like, again, let's talk. Let's, you know, work this out. How are we going to settle this payment? Again, we'll work it out, but don't be an asshole. But there is something to be said about finally having like the upper hand here. It's like, yeah, now white people don't have the you know, million safety nets that we already have. Now you get to experience some of the daily fear that uh, black people experience all the fucking time, just in a very different way. But I still say you shouldn't be rude. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's not that hard to be a nice person, goddammit. And as I said during the episode, like, do I want to, you know, pay 15% into a restitution tax when I, you know, already have to pay however many in all these other taxes? Fuck no, I don't. <laughs> But again, if that's the legal precedent and it actually does get us working towards putting everyone on an equal playing field for ones, then I'm not opposed to it. <laughs> Will I bitch and complain about that tax every single time I have to pay for it? Yeah, but I'll live. <laughs> everyone will live. We'll survive that. But still, it was um, both entertaining, realistic, and frustrating that so many white people were absolutely terrified and pissed off and like losing their minds over this situation like is it huge like would this absolutely rock up everything absolutely but again it's not the end of the world the scene with his uh now ex-wife it was funny but it was kind of frustrating too because there really are so many white people who will do the same shit that she just did. <laughs> Where she's like, um, I'm Peruvian. It's like, um, you were white yesterday, what the fuck? There's definitely a lot of white people who really reach to be a minority. Don't expect me to randomly come out and be like, oh, actually, I'm, um, half Native American. <laughs> it was wild seeing the guy from the boat return. Uh, now we know his name is Ernest, which has to be a play on the fact that um, it's so similar to Earn. I mean, it basically is the same name, is it not? And just like in the first episode, he spouts some rather uncomfortable truths about um, the curse of being white, which is a really interesting theme that uh, I've been told is a big part of the season, and I now really see that coming through. I mean, they're literally discussing it. And he made some valid points. I kind of get the impression that the... The intention of the episode is to make you like this main character and then put him in this situation that seems super, super unfair. Because, I mean, it is a super unfair situation. He's not wrong when he says, you know, I haven't done anything. I'm, I'm not the one who owned any slaves. But Ernest makes the great point of like, well, what do they deserve? You know, slavery is not something that's happened so long ago and now it's all done and forgotten about 
It's something that's still affecting people all the way to this day. And you paying these uh, restitutions is going to start to right that. And I suppose you could take it a number of different ways. But when he says um, you're going to be all right, your daughter's going to be all right um, because we're free. I kind of took that as him saying, like, yeah, your life is getting flipped upside down. She's going to grow up without a dad now, but you're white. <laughs> so you're going to be OK. This safety net has been taken away, but there still are several others that are a part of the system. Again, I could be wrong about that because I think you could also read that as him sort of implying to him like, yeah, you could kill yourself too and, you know, be free of all this. <laughs> Maybe it's just a double meaning. I don't know. And then in the final scene, it, um, in my opinion, it was a little too on the nose, but I suppose one could argue that it wasn't. But it basically showed that, you know, all the like waiters and waitresses up front, they're all white serving uh, black parties and the jobs that are filled on the line are all people of color, kind of showing that wealth has shifted to a completely different party. <laughs> but at the same time, they've shown that uh, our main character and other people have adjusted to this all. It wasn't the end of the world, but it was a complete shift in the way everything works. Yeah, I mean, I do think that final scene could be interpreted a number of different ways. But again, I saw it as things have changed dramatically, but, you know, the world moves on. People didn't get killed from this. It just changed it up quite a lot and maybe not in a way that some people really like. But let's move into the technicals. Writing in this episode, I think there were some bold risks taken, again, diverging away from the main cast, hitting this topic, which I'm sure is <laughs> going to piss some people off. But I, again, I'm sure that's the point as well. But there were some things about the script that either were lost on me or I think were just a little too vague. For me, that opening scene, I'm still kind of like, if they wanted to show that he was ignoring you know, a problem happening. And I think they should have shown the problem happening rather than completely be from his perspective of just not even noticing it. Because I don't know if there was a problem or not. <laughs> and I'm, that whole first scene is a little strange to me because of that. Same thing with the final scene. Um, I think it makes sense to be a little ambiguous with it, but I think I could have used maybe just one more scene to show how he has adjusted to the new norm. You know, again, to show whether he is all right or he's, you know, completely not. Just give me more of a gauge where he's at so I know what you're trying to say with the story. Like, I feel like I understand, but there's a little hint of doubt because I feel like they were lacking maybe just one more scene to, you know, affirm how he's doing. Character motivation seemed pretty strong because in general, it was kind of like generalizing character motivations across groups of people rather than single characters, except for our main one, like showing how some white people were just so angry and upset over this happening. The bullshit, um, excuses that everyone's heard like a million times and a million different situations and then of course there's the character of Ernest who I mean I feel like it'd be pointless even trying to come up with a character motivation for him he's just <laughs> he's one of those people you're like is he even real is it just you know some surreal hallucination ghost type situation so for him to come in and have this very moving uh, monologue, I think is actually like spot on for that character. Plot progression, uh, there's none. Um, we don't see our main characters at all. It's completely a side story. It's again, just to explore a different concept. And pacing, um, I do think the pacing was too slow. There were some parts here where I was like, I'm getting bored. <laughs> I probably wouldn't if we had our main characters, but because we don't, some of these scenes are really dragging for me. Don't get me wrong, I still think the pacing was acceptable, like it was a good episode. The writing overall was strong, but there were definitely a lot of scenes this time around where I was like, all right, come on, <laughs> let's move it along, please. So I'm going to do a 7 out of 10. Editing in this episode, the editing isn't 
like spectacular, but it's also like better than serviceable. There just weren't really too many editing moments that were really needed in this episode. Once again, there were very long takes to kind of accentuate the surrealism or the comedy or the like uncomfortable nature of certain scenes. And even in the one moment of the episode where there's like a slight burst in frenetic action with um, the guy chasing uh, our main character in the car, <laughs> there's still very slow cuts. There's only like one uh, cut in there that was pretty rapidly paced, but it's suitable. Like that's kind of what the show needs, but there's nothing that impressed me. So I'll do an eight out of 10. Cinematography was very, very good. There were a lot of shots that made the main character feel extremely small in the environment. Sometimes they do that on this show, not necessarily to make them feel small, but you know, to emphasize what is around them. Here, it was clearly intentionally making him small, which I think plays into the idea of like, oh, you feel bad for him. Like he's just getting basically picked on by everybody. But then they hit you with some really hard truths right there with the big monologue from Ernest. And the cinematography for that was also very good, seeing him like just framed in the background out of focus, that was nice. And I'm also a big fan of one takes. So the one take at the very end, I was like, hell yeah, that looked nice. I really got nothing bad to say about cinematography. So I'm gonna go 10 out of 10. Sound design was great in this episode. Episode. They used a lot of very unconventional, unnerving kind of moments for the score. I don't know, there was a lot of really good sound work done in here, both diegetic and non-diegetic, so I think they did fantastic with that. And I love that they used that song at the very end, <laughs> just because it reminded me of us, and I kind of want to go rewatch that movie, actually. It was pretty good. Yeah, the sound design particularly impressed me, so I'll also do a 10 out of 10. Acting in the episode um, was very good. I'm not sure the name of the actor who plays uh, Ernest, but I thought he did a very, very good job there at the end. So unnaturally friendly it just makes it so creepy um even though he is again spouting some hard truths and in many ways it's like oh this guy actually kind of gets it and then he kills himself because he seemingly can't deal with the new norm but justin bartha also did a fantastic job um you know as our main character oh wait a second and just now uh, after skimming through again i noticed there in the first scene he accidentally like pockets the little cookie things that he found and so he basically you know gets away with shoplifting where the the black guy in the scene gets sent to the back of the line but i still say they should have made that more clear as to what was going on with that because i don't know what was going on with him but i do think it's interesting that they showed how easily our main character got away with um taking those and nothing really happening again further proving that you know they're gonna be all right because they're white but yeah, I thought the acting uh, all around was quite good, even from the child actor playing the daughter. So I'm going to do another 10 out of 10. Costumes and makeup, I think were very good. Everyone looked in character on point. He did a very good job making our main character like super, super generic. I think intentionally so, so that pretty much anyone could look at that character and be like, yeah, that's me. Or like I could insert myself in that place fairly easily. And I think having Ernest wear the exact same clothes and everything really sells that he's probably not even real or something along those lines. Again, it just makes it a little more interesting, makes the mystery more exciting. But there wasn't anything that really, really impressed me. So I'm doing an eight out of 10. Set design was also quite good. This is another category where I'm like, everything looks very good, very serviceable, serves a purpose, including the office that he works in originally having like zero color or character, <laughs> but nothing impresses. So I'm gonna go again for eight out of 10. And finally, visual effects. Again, this is a show where CGI is not really a thing, but practical effects do happen sometimes. And really there's no major visual effects being done. The biggest, most overt one is uh, Ernest shooting himself in the head at the very end. Most of it was practical, but I'll bet the muzzle flare was, you know, added in post. And I don't know if they had an actual person, uh, you know, just go face down and hold their breath. Or if they put like a dummy in the water, 
I also get the impression that the blood that's uh, like filling up the pool is probably a digital effect, but maybe not. Either way, it looks quite good. I, I was not impressed by it per se, but I was I was very satisfied with it. <laughs> and if there are any other visual effects in the episode, they were super hidden, so well done. And I'll do a nine out of 10 for that. And that gives this episode an 8.8 .8 out of 10, which I think is the highest that I've rated all four, but Personally, it's probably my least favorite of the episodes and probably not even for the reason that you might expect. <laughs> Again, uh, the whole restitution thing, I'm actually like, yeah, let's do it, fuck it. <laughs> it's just how rude everybody fucking was the entire episode. And the fact that we didn't get any of the main characters again. I don't know how many episodes there are in this season, but I'm like, come on, man. I wanna, I wanna see Ern, I wanna see Van. What are Darius and Al doing? Like, come on, man. But it was still a very well told story, and it is stuff that is important to talk about. So I didn't hate it by any means, but out of the four, personally, it's my least favorite. But I think objectively, it might be the strongest of the bunch. No point really in predicting what's going to happen next week. This was completely like an anthology story, so whatever we get next week could be really anything. <laughs> like. I would assume we're going to return to the main group because if they go two in a row um, without them, that's I think that is going to be asking too much of the audience at that point. Either way, I'm excited for whatever's coming up. I'm sure it's going to be good, even though I said this is my least favorite of the four that we've seen. I still really liked it. Like the show is very, very well made. And I just recently heard news that season four is going to be the last season of the show. And that is a damn shame. <laughs> so let's enjoy it while it lasts. I'll see you all in the next episode. And that's about it.